Cancer sucks. I would put money on the fact that every single one of you watching this video has somehow been touched by cancer, whether it's you personally, a loved one, a close friend, you know someone that is suffering with or has passed away from cancer. I lost my dad to cancer a few years ago and I made it part of my mission in terms of just investigating health to uncover what kind of nutritional things can change to really at least slow down cancer progression so that we can actually get a grasp on it. Here's the thing, I'm a human and I'm real and I also understand that the medical community has its place, right? Medicine has its place. We can't just sit here and say food is only medicine. We are fortunate enough to live in a society where we do have advances in modern medicine and Western medicine that we can use in tandem with Eastern medicine and in tandem with nutritional protocols that work. So the cool thing is I'm always investigating the cancer research from the side of, okay, what can we do with our diet to make it so that drugs can be more effective and we can actually get the job done? So this isn't just some one-sided thing saying everyone should drop their cancer drugs and just eat this way. This is cool emerging research. So in order for all of this to make sense, I will give a brief breakdown of how a cancer cell generally eats and how a normal cell generally eats. And then I'm gonna reference a really cool new study that came out in 2019, some brand new stuff. A uh, real quick call out, if you will hit that red subscribe button and then hit the little bell icon and turn on notifications so you never miss any one of my videos, I'd really, really appreciate it because we got new videos coming up just about every single day at 7.30 a.m. Pacific time. Okay, so as we get into this, let's take a look at how a normal cell usually eats, right? In a normal situation. Normally, a cell will take in glucose and it will create what's called ATP, which is energy currency. It's what we use for energy in our bodies. Well, that requires oxygen to be present. So sugar comes in or glucose, goes into a cell, it combines with oxygen, goes through mitochondrial respiration, it goes through, it creates energy, metabolism, right? If oxygen for whatever reason is not present, okay, maybe you're working out or maybe you are holding your breath or maybe you just for whatever reason don't have a lot of oxygen at that point in time. Well, when that happens, your body creates lactic acid. So basically, we always create energy but when there's not oxygen present, we create lactic acid too. That's a normal cell. But with a cancer cell, it's totally different. See, most cancer cells will take in glucose and convert it to lactic acid even when oxygen is present. So what the difference here is that a non-cancer cell, a regular, a regular cell, it's actually quite difficult for it to create lactic acid, whereas a cancer cell creates a lot of lactic acid. What this tells us about cancer cells is two things. One, they sort of have an impaired mitochondrial function. Okay, they don't have the ability to process energy actually quite efficiently. Okay, because they have this impaired mitochondrial function, they require a huge amount of glucose. So that's the other piece. They require a lot of sugar to really grow. That doesn't mean you have to be eating copious amounts of sugar to get cancer. It just means that a cancer cell will commandeer a lot of the sugar because it has that impaired mitochondrial function that makes it need a lot more. Now, the other thing that's really important to know is that cancer cells rely a lot on insulin signaling. Insulin triggers our cell doorways to open so that we can have fuel. Well, cancer cells really rely on insulin a lot because that insulin is a signaling pathway for that cancer cell to get fuel. So they are sort of insulin hogs. They love the insulin because it allows more and more sugar to come in because they need that glucose to fuel. It's not like they're just these gluttons. It's they just don't metabolize it well, so they require more. So even for just a small amount of growth, it needs a lot of sugar. So the point is, is that if we starve that out, we can have a positive effect. Now, when I say starve it out, I don't mean just literally starve yourself. That is one way of doing it, but fats and ketone bodies don't really get metabolized well in a lot of different cancer cells. Not all of them, but in a lot of them. They just, their mitochondria is so dysfunctional that it cannot process it. So it essentially starves the tumor. Now, playing devil's advocate, one of the things we might have to look at is it's a, if a cancer cell is starved, could there potentially be a hormetic effect where the cancer cell gets stronger because it's starving? You see, when we fast as humans, we kind of get stronger because we stress our bodies to a point where they adapt. So could we be potentially making a cancer cell stronger? Some, it might be the case. There's actually some evidence of particular kidney cancers that actually grow more on a ketogenic diet. So we just, we need to be able to lean on science and also lean on medicine and lean on modern research to know what works and what doesn't. So now it's time to reference a really cool new study. It's published just in 2019. It's some brand new stuff. And it's gonna tell us a lot about how squamous cell cancers respond to the ketogenic diet. So let's dive into that. So this study was published in the journal Cell Reports, August 2019. It took a look at mice 
that had squamous cell lung cancer. Now, squamous cell lung cancer is a pretty aggressive kind of cancer. Okay, all cancer sucks, but squamous cell is pretty aggressive. And what they did is they, they wanted to put these mice on a ketogenic diet or normal chow diet. Chow is just normal mice chow, uh, kind of equivalent to the standard American diet, to be honest. And uh, one of the ketogenic diet groups, they also gave a specific drug to that would inhibit glucose from being reabsorbed by the kidneys. So basically, they put them on a keto diet and they also just crushed their ability to recycle glucose. They were like, the goal here is nutritionally change their life, but also medically intervene so you don't have a whole lot of glucose floating around. Studies were pretty flabbergasting, okay? So the squamous cell cancers stopped growing in the ketogenic diet group and the ketogenic diet plus drug group, okay? The regular chow diet group, the cancers continued to grow. Now the interesting thing here is the cancer cells didn't shrink, okay? So I'm not saying that keto reverses or cures cancer, but it stopped the growth, essentially starving it for a point in time where if you could use radiation or potentially chemo or any kind of thing or, or some of these trial drugs as an adjunct to this, you probably could get rid of it or at least have a positive effect. I'm very careful not to make claims surrounding the world of cancer, but this is powerful, powerful stuff. It's just interesting that we look at the non-squamous cell cancer cells, the non-squamous cell, they ended up not having a response. The ketogenic diet didn't really do anything for them. So it's interesting and it allows us, again, we have to look at the big picture here. Now, for those of you out there that are saying, well, this is mice, this doesn't mean anything. Well, they took that into account. So they went ahead and they sampled 192 people. 192 people that had squamous cell cancer of either the lung or the esophagus. And then they took a look at people that had what are called adenocarcinoma, a different kind of cancer. Well, here's what's interesting. They found the group that had the squamous cell, on average, had significantly higher levels of glucose. So correlation does not equal causation, but it was pretty clear. Higher glucose equaled a higher instance of the squamous cell cancers. Just kind of interesting lifestyle fact to factor in there, right? But the adenocarcinoma, no change whatsoever. So it brings us right back in. Specific kinds of cancers, where we need a lot of research, will respond very well to the ketogenic diet. But hey, let's go ahead and let's dive into something else for just a second. I want to touch on just one other thing, something known as P13K. P13K is a particular pathway, a signaling pathway, and it's usually activated by insulin. Okay, insulin will activate P13K, and it triggers all kinds of growth in different cells. It has to do with mTOR, mammalian target of rapamycin, the, all these different things. Like when you work out, you trigger mTOR to grow, to be anabolic, to grow your body. We want mTOR in a lot of cases. You go to the gym, you're trying to spike your mTOR. But there's a lot of evidence out there that shows that mTOR could also be positive for cancer growth. Well, okay, take that with a grain of salt, but here we're talking about another pathway called the P13K pathway. Insulin, carbohydrates, spikes this P13 pathway in a way, or activates it, which has been shown in the journal Nature to have an effect with cancer. So here, let me explain. It's kind of indirect. You see, they gave subjects drugs that would inhibit P13K. And when they inhibited P13K, it stopped the growth of specific cancer cells. So once again, they found that when this signaling pathway was activated, P13K, cancer cells would grow. Uh, when it wasn't activated or blocked, cancer cells wouldn't grow. But we do know, indirectly, that insulin spikes P13K or elevates or activates P13K. So if we can crush our insulin levels by going on a ketogenic diet, then we can also stop this P13K. So that's just an interesting thing to look at. Now, again, I wanna break this down as simply as possible and save a lot for other videos. We also have to remember here that different brain cancers absolutely thrive on glucose and some cancers still thrive on fats. So we do need to know, we do need to get a real diagnosis, right? I can say that by and large though, if you're following a low carb ketogenic diet, you probably put yourself at least at less risk for cancer. And, and again, this is just me talking as a friend, okay? This is not any clinical evidence to say this is my opinion, that if you are at least reducing your insulin levels, despite whatever kind of cancer, whether you're high fat or not, you're at least keeping your carbs low, you are at least stopping some of these signaling pathways that would grow all cancers. So I think you're in a better situation to essentially prevent. But again, this is just me talking and I'm not a doctor. I'm just some guy on the internet. So anyhow, I can do more videos on this and I have done other videos on this, but I encourage you to really go to some of the thought leaders in the ketogenic space and look at some of the cancer treatment methodologies that are occurring now. Look at some of these trials and don't hate on the entire healthcare system. We understand that chemotherapy is a mess. We understand that whole entire continuum of care when it comes to cancer is a giant rigmarole. 
But there is some hope and there is some light at the end of the tunnel. It just takes you to educate yourself. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Hit that red subscribe button and hit that little bell icon. I'll see you in the next video.